The lies of George Santos. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the conversation. I'm David Schuster. For that New York Congressman, the Republican, and all of his false claims, those false claims continue to pile up, and there's even more pressure now from his own party to possibly have him resign. Here to talk about all of this is Brian Metzger. He's a politics reporter for Insider. Um, Brian, he's only been in office for a week, um, but it does feel like uh, there's more pressure that is growing. Yeah, absolutely. Office, I guess, since the early hours of January 7th. He took office a little bit late because, you know, we had to work out the speakership battle over the course of four days. But, you know, it's been fascinating to see him kind of get his bearings as he's, um, you know, sort of come through the first week of this. We saw him get committee assignments earlier this week. He's going to be on the Small Business Committee and the House Science, uh, Space, and Technology Committee. You know, it's, it's, Fascinating to see uh, a member who has, I think, a large degree of controversy surrounding him, um, but not the usual kind of controversy we see. You know, it's not that his political positions are necessarily super out of the mainstream, but that he's told a series of lies about himself. And so we're seeing at this point a range of responses from different um, corners of the Republican Party. Um, local Republican groups have called for him to resign, but currently House Republican leadership. Um, has not. Now, in terms of the response and the, the range of reactions, when it was announced that he was going to be on the uh, committee that essentially oversees NASA, the internet went wild with things like first man on the moon, that he was going to make all sorts of claims about having been a NASA astronaut, because that's what people now expect from somebody like this. Is the Republican leadership, are they hearing this criticism as well? Are they embarrassed? Are they just sort of thinking they can wait out the storm? Where's their mind in all of this? Yeah, I think it's it's a lot of the latter. I think there's a sense that maybe they can wait out the storm. You know, maybe law enforcement will eventually sort of force their hand. You know, I think the line that folks like McCarthy are taking right now is that yes, there are some questions about this guy. Um, we may not have known exactly what was what was up with him, but um, we're going to let that play out. And until then, he is a duly elected member of Congress. He's going to serve on committees like everyone else. Um, but I think, you know, from talking with folks, I think a lot of Republicans, in, I think including McCarthy, are concerned about him. Um, but rather than forcing him out, um, which, you know, I think that they, you know, they, they have a slim majority. They're not interested in losing any of those votes if they don't have to. Um, they're just going to wait for this to play out. And I think if there's some sort of indictment, um, that would be the point at which you would actually be pushed. To resign. And it does feel like, I mean, the pushes may be coming. It feels like every time any reporter goes back and interviews somebody who knew George Santos, uh, just, you know, on Anderson Cooper on CNN, there was a guy who said, Oh, yeah, I, I raised $3,000 for a GoFundMe page to help my dog get surgery. And it went through the George Santos charity and he took the money. So every day it feels like there's a, there's a new revelation. You've conducted something like 20 interviews with members of Congress about the situation. Is he persona non grata? Do people not want to be around him or not be picked? How are how are members reacting with or dealing with them or not? Yeah, well, I think on the Democratic side, it's pretty unanimous in that folks are quick to say that he has no business being in Congress, um, that they don't respect him. Um, Pat, Congressman Pat Ryan, who's also from New York, said something that was kind of striking to me, which is that he's basically the only member of the chamber who he would say that he has absolutely zero respect for. Um, which you know, there's a lot of different members of Congress, so that's that's certainly a bold statement. Um, among Republicans, I think you see, I think the majority of the caucus taking a position akin to, well, this is concerning. Um, I haven't really spoken with him, but it seems like he has a lot of questions to answer. Um, similar to the line that McCarthy's taking, I think a lot of folks are saying, like, yeah, it doesn't seem great. Um, I'm going to steer clear of that. Um, but there's an interesting um, sort of cohort of people that are sort of on the more conservative side of the caucus, who, you know, some of which had actually sought to defend Santos. Um, I think your folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt and Gates are those who have sort of aligned themselves with Santos and saying, yes, he lied, but a lot of people lie and he was duly elected. And, you know, that shouldn't be a problem. And it's up to the voters um, who are willing to say that publicly. And then there's another cohort of people who, you know, almost take a certain amount of sympathy towards him and say, like, look, it's it's he clearly has has some troubles. Um, 
I'm going to show compassion for I'm pro- I've been through controversies before. Um, and then you have about eight members of the caucus who have actually called for his res- resignation. So really kind of a full spectrum here, but I think most folks are sort of trying to keep their distance. Um, and I, I think it would be fair to say that he's a little bit of a pry at this point. Yeah, and Santos, uh, for his part, he has admitted to lying about his employment history, his education, his Jewish heritage. He has not yet addressed things like some of the apparent now campaign finance questions and, and controversies over all of that. As far as House Speaker McCarthy, you mentioned him. I sort of wonder if McCarthy is also in a bit of a pickle because here you have, I mean, pretty, you know, fairly sophisticated politicians now. And I think of sort of Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene, they see this as an opportunity, it sounds like, to sort of create some leverage. That if they perhaps align themselves with poor George Santos, and now McCarthy crosses George Santos, then McCarthy is also perhaps up against it with the Freedom Caucus. It feels like there's a lot of political gamesmanship that may have nothing to do with George Santos and all this, but just the different factions in a very tightly divided Congress where just a couple of votes either way in the Republican caucus can change policy. Yeah, I mean, I certainly, you know, I, I don't profess to know exactly what the motivations of someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene or Matt Gates are with respect to this. Uh, you know, it was interesting when Santos actually appeared on uh, Steve Bannon's War Room podcast that was hosted by Matt Gates. Um, Gates actually asked him a couple different times, you know, where did that $700,000 loan come from? And in both cases, Santos did. Didn't really answer. He kind of deflected and said, "Well, it didn't come from Ukraine. It didn't come from." And so it's whatever it is. I think it's definitely the case that, given some of the concessions that were made uh, during the speaker fight, given how I think weak McCarthy's position is relative to prior speakers, um, there's not a lot of bold action that someone like McCarthy can take with respect to his caucus without being absolutely sure that it wouldn't upset his position, even with just a handful of members because now there is this motion to vacate. As far as a George Santos himself, right? Uh, I mean, obviously he's being trailed by a lot of reporters. A lot of reporters are asking about this stuff and he's admitting to some things and not others. Does he have, I mean, has he said anything new over the last you know 48 hours that suggests that he's ready to sort of address all of this? Or is his strategy also basically to say, look, I, I'm duly elected. I'm gonna focus on my job. I don't wanna deal with these controversies. Yeah, it was interesting. He, you know, initially back in December when the lies came out, um, he initially did a little bit of a press tour. You know, he spoke with the New York Post. He spoke with a couple other small outlets um, and sought to explain himself a little bit. You know, he addressed the background stuff. He addressed the education stuff. Didn't get into the campaign finance stuff as much. Um, and then what happened was he had this interview on Fox News with Tulsi Gabbard um, that I think perhaps he expected would be a little bit more friendly than it ended up being. Um, and after that, he's kind of clammed up. Um, aside from the uh, Matt Gates war room appearance, he basically hasn't really spoken that much publicly about all of his troubles. Um, he's obviously, as you alluded to, been chased around a lot in the hallways. Um, there's actually a, a full on stakeout at this point in the hallway outside his office. Um, and all he's really said to the press is that, you know, no, I'm not resigning. You know, I was duly elected, I'm not resigning. And so I think obviously this isn't gonna go away. The interest in him isn't isn't gonna go away. I think there will be still some number of reporters outside of his office. Um, you know, I'm not sure if I'll necessarily be joining them, but he's yeah. gonna have to explain himself. And I think it's just a matter of time. But with other members of Congress who have gotten in trouble, sometimes what causes the dam to break is when the poll numbers come out and say the entire party starts to be brought down in terms of public image because of the protection of one controversial member of Congress. Have you seen any polling or have the Democrats whispered anything to you or even some Republicans about where the polling is on all this and and how they're looking and even whether they're looking at the polls right now and trying to sort of gauge what the damage might be to the overall Republican brand? I, um, as of now, have not seen any polling, but I think that you're right in the sense that it's it's going to be on some level a calculation of you know how much controversy, how much drama um, is this guy's vote worth? Um, because you know the truth of the matter is that this is a district that um, President Joe Biden won. 
in 2020, I think if a special election were held there due to some early res resignation from Santos, you would likely see um, a Democrat be in a very good position to win that seat. And so you're basically, if you're a Republican leadership, you are balancing the imperative of having as many votes as you can possibly have with you know, just how, how big of a controversy is this gonna be? And I think if it continues to be week after week of what we saw this past week, um, where you know the local party's calling him to resign, where he's getting so much media attention that it's sort of distracting from the headlines that House Republicans would like to create with the different bills they're teeing up. I think that might be something that could change their calculus. Yeah, one thing that is certainly going to change is I've heard a lot from Democrats who are now, you know, hitting themselves in the forehead for not doing more, essentially research and opposition research into uh, him, uh, into George Santos during the campaign when some of the stuff might have been readily available, and then the Democrats might have had a better chance of winning the seat, uh, as opposed to all of this uh, sort of coming out after the election. So Democrats um, may take their opposition research a little bit more seriously the next time around with every candidate. But in any case, Brian Metzger, he's a politics reporter for Insider. Brian, thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me, great to be here. Got it.